but it's the last day with the Prius. We're taking it back today. We uh, just, you know, the, the road trip is over. So let's take a look at some of the details of this vehicle. I mean, there, there's, it's a Toyota. It's a good car. All right, I'm not going to lie. This, you know, it's a Prius. It's a, it's all those things that you think it is as far as being some kind of hippie mobile or whatever. But in reality, because Toyota made it, it's an absolutely fantastic car but no car is perfect so what are the good points what are the bad points what do i really think and would i buy one there's a few problems this car has like if you're sitting in the driver's seat and you're trying to make a, a lane change or what have you you've got a blind spot the size of a 1966 star cheap executive pontiac i'm telling you it's just vision behind you is really bad it's it's got this air dam this air spoiler thing right in the middle of your back window right in the middle of your vision and really really a prius needs an air dam or an air spoiler i don't think so i mean yeah it'll do 80 on the freeway but spoiler i don't think so also on the sides you got all these posts in the way and and lack of vision and and everything else is just really hard to see out of but you know, the car drives pretty solid. It's nice and quiet at slow speeds. And the, the radio works well, brings in stations nice. The cruise control works good. However, road noise. This thing has road noise like you wouldn't believe. There's a lot of filming I took in this car that I just couldn't use because of road noise. Here you have a car that's costing you $40,000 and it's got deafening road noise. That's not a good thing. Now, if it was a $20,000 car and had road noise, you kind of expect it, but not for something at this price. One thing that I don't like, though, is the fact that the type of people that normally buy this car, not everyone, because, I mean, as you've no doubt seen in some of the comments, there's some normal people that drive this car every day, but there are so many people that are self-absorbed and thinking they're all that in a sack of chips because they drive one of these things, that they've really made a bad name for Prius drivers. And so people just naturally assume that you're an arrogant jerk when you drive one of these cars. So I get a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of people giving me the stank eye when I'm driving down the road and uh, irritated that I'm even there because I'm in the Prius. And it's not for anything I've done because I'm driving like a normal human being. I'm driving like every other car on the road, and yet they just assume I'm a jerk, and that's really not the car's fault. That's the fault of the people that normally buy these cars and drive like that, uh, you know, and, and there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Now, there's one cool thing about this. Your hands are full of groceries or kids or what have you, and, and you walk up to the car and you got the little key fob doohickey in your pocket. Uh, watch what happens. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That little beep sound there, that was the door unlocking and it just opens right up like that. And you can stick all your stuff in, get in your car, hit the start button, and off you go. Now that's pretty cool. What about ergonomics? Toyota, this I think is where you went wrong. You tried too hard to make it unusual. Because you were wildly successful in making it unusual, and in the process, you made it not really work. I mean, check this thing out right here this is your console or the upper floor of the console this is a two-story console you got the upper floor here and it's got a nice cup holder here handy this one here your elbow runs into all the time and you try to scrape the the uh, drink out of there and end up making a mess and get coffee all over your elbow and then there's the first floor down here now Maybe if you are a malnourished and uh, anorexic vegetarian, you might be able to use this part down here. But I can't. I mean, I've won the battle against anorexia. I've worked really hard at it and I've been successful. And I cannot get past my leg down here to use this part. And it's important because you got your 12 volt plug in down here. And when I try to use my GPS, I have it hooked up here and I want to plug it in. I got to reach around this thing. I mean, this is a hazard. 
like that to do it. So I think this whole thing is a bad idea. It should go away. So what about the seats? Well, the seats are pretty typical. I think they've, they're using the same seats as some other cars that cost a lot less. Um, I had to really work at it to get it comfortable for me to drive for any time period of time without my back hurting. But, you know, that's pretty standard. Seats are okay. I'm give them a C. What about the back seat? Well, the back seat worked out pretty good. I had four, uh, four people in the car, all adults. The guys in the back seat were about six foot and they had room. So I got to give them an A on the back seat. Back seat works out pretty good. You push this little button right here and you just fold it down like that. And you end up with a pretty good size flat deck back here. I'm really happy with the whole storage aspect back here because there's quite a bit of room. I had no trouble getting my luggage in here. And you have another hatch down here. There's just a good amount of room for a hatchback. That may, you know, these are good points about the Prius. So overall, would I buy the Toyota Prius? My answer for that is maybe. Now, as a new car, no, I would not. Uh, it's got too many problems for something this expensive. You're not getting value for your money. Uh, and that's really what it boils down to is getting value for your money. If you're buy, I don't buy cars to feel good about myself. If I did that, you know, maybe I'd, you know, get me some jacked up and fancy uh, four by four so I can feel like a big man. Or maybe I'd get a Prius so I could demonstrate to everybody just how green I am and how wonderful I am and how awesome I am for the for the environment, et cetera, et cetera. Both of those things are a load of crap, so I'm not gonna do it. You'd never pay for it with the gas savings. I mean, yeah, 50 miles a gallon, but realistically, most of the people in the comments are talking 35, 40 miles a gallon on the average that they're getting. Well, that doesn't fly too well because I can get that out of a much less expensive car that is much cheaper to work on and you know, just all around less of a problem. Like for example, a, a Scion XB, I keep talking about those. I can get one of those for the same price as a used, you know, new for the same price as a used Prius. And you know, it's, they get 35, 40 miles a gallon and they're roomier and there's better vision. You can see behind you and around you and people don't assume that you're this jerk driving the road. So people are nicer to you on the road. I just, I just don't see the benefit. Now, why I would buy one of these is if I got it second hand and the price was right for the miles on it. But you got to keep in mind at some point the batteries are going to go bad. And I've heard anywhere between four and ten thousand, four thousand and ten thousand for new batteries for one of these things, which is just outrageous in my opinion. But I guess it is what it is. And that's the price you pay for having one of these. Uh, somebody said you can get a used set for about $400 at a wrecking yard, but, uh, you know, what kind of condition is that in? It's hard to say. Chances are I'll never own one of these, but I'll tell you what, I will rent another one on a road trip because it gets awesome mileage and it's kind of fun and uh, to drive. Although, when I got back in the airport in Seattle and I got in the car uh, in the minivan that picked me up they had me drive it I thought I was in a rocket ship I tell you what I stepped on the on the throttle pedal on that thing and boom off I took and I thought man this thing's powerful and I, I'm here to tell you there's nothing powerful and fast about a testosterone sucking minivan just in comparison to what I was used to in the Prius it was pretty zippy so the the way that they take off is completely different. Yeah, you you saw in one of the earlier videos how this thing did actually take off pretty fast, but it's not snappy. It's a, more of a surge than a snappy takeoff. And so anyway, you can you get the idea, and you can make your own decision on whether or not you want to buy and own one of these things. If you want to be people who look down on you as though you are some kind of jerk, and and or maybe you are a jerk and you want to be a jerk. I don't care. It's up to you. Uh, you can drive one of these like that if you so desire.
But, uh, you know, it, it just depends on where you want to go, where you want to be, and, and how you want to get there. But uh, I, I certainly think there's a whole lot better deal out there than 